Welcome to the stream. Hello. This is Jeremy. Wow. Look at that. That was a really cool thingy. I just, I was sorry. I was just reacting to your, your transition. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. It's a little glitchy, actually. It doesn't play nice with, with the CPU. Uh, I'm not going to lie, but, um, but I love it so much that I can't get rid of it. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. Everything about your stream is beautiful. I love your stream. Oh, thank you so much. Actually, ditto. So one of the reasons I, uh, <laughs> this. <laughs> well, yes, this room particularly, <laughs> um is absolutely gorgeous <laughs> uh but so other than right at this moment um other than right at this moment right now uh n in the past i know jeremy just moved so this is not his normal stream screen uh this is particularly terrible timing i think to <laughs> show off your room but it is what it is we, yeah w when we first talked about this uh we schedule everything like pre me knowing that we had to move so it wasn't like a, we were planning on moving for a while the the woman who owned the house that we lived in for six years decided to sell because we're in nashville which is a pretty i mean there's a lot of pretty crazy housing markets right now i think it's everywhere yeah. um but certainly nashville is not exempt and so you know it was a good relationship with her and she was she was cool you know she's nice and everything i don't blame her for any reason for selling the house but it was definitely like a, oh we have like less than four weeks to get out of here so yeah that's ugh, that's stressful well, yeah. I'm I'm still glad you were able to make it work. Was today your bat your first stream back after moving? So we did one on Wednesday as well, just because I was like getting like antsy. Like mm -hmm. nothing's really set up. The lights don't obviously like. I don't even know if this is where the desk is going to be. The we got like over in this corner. This vocal booth is that I built when we first moved to Nashville. It's like in shambles. It's in all the pieces that we have to take apart. So yeah. the, I just like I did a one hour one on Wednesday and a one hour one today because um, as you probably know, like oftentimes we get as much from streaming as we as we uh as people give to us so yeah there are some of those days it's like i just need to be with the people that want to come and hang out with me honestly yeah. that was we're way too quickly getting into the mental health positivity okay you need to calm down i'm oh, just saying uh, shit. Uh. <laughs> no um oh so chief has a question about my spoon check thing so real real quick first of all there is a dynamic follow button for moonlight social on the screen y'all please click the shit out of it you have no idea what you are missing at this moment well obviously not at this moment but when they are streaming whether it's jenica and jeremy or just jeremy on the moonlight social channel Y'all will not be disappointed. Please use that follow button that I I set a whole ass alarm to go off to make sure that I don't forget to put that follow button on. So y'all's is please click it. Click that shit. Um, and then second of all, I have a spoon check redemption because um, I'm a spoonie. I have an autoimmune disease. And so people typically with chronic pain and or autoimmune diseases will call themselves spoonies. There's a whole spoonie community. Spoon theory just refers to, you know, say we wake up with 10 spoons in the morning. Those are our energy levels, right? You know, you use a spoon for showering, you use a spoon for making breakfast, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's why I have a spoon counter sometimes on my screen. I don't have a spoon counter on my screen at this point, but um, normally, 99% of my streams are music and I have a spoon counter on the screen. So you will see it on my other stre screens, words. So yeah, that's a quick, very TLDR explanation of the spoons. Uh, but I do want to get into it uh, with Jeremy here. So uh, you have so much to talk about. Like you, you create content on so many different platforms. Uh, Obviously, I'm sticking with Twitch streamers in general, but you're actually the first musician I've had on who also puts out music on Spotify and, you know, distribution um, and is also a YouTuber and is also a filmmaker. So if you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind, please try to give like a description of your channel and content uh, overall, if it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. Um, no, thank you for that. That's a very lovely intro. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So I've been, uh, pro you know, similar to you, been very creative for my uh, my whole life. And so I, I went to school for writing and film and I started, you know, doing music journalism in school, um, did a lot of film projects with with friends and and, you know, formed a band in the marching band with with Jenica. We met, as you know, became best friends and formed a band. So everything that I've been able to do to this point, I've been very fortunate um, to be able to, like, kind of flex the different parts of the creative muscles and uh, end up, you know, ultimately being able to really 
find what I need in the moment from the different things that I like doing, whether that's writing, it's filming, whether it's obviously, you know, creating music, producing the music. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the bittersweet things about leaving the house is that that is where we created most of our, of our recent music was in that house. So, you know, in our studio, I know you guys do a lot of recording and, and stuff as well. It's like, mm -hmm. it, you know, there's always like, you always remember where you were when you record something that means something to you. And so, um, so anyways, all that being said, our channel on Twitch is very much just like a hang. Like we play music, we sometimes we do it really well. Other times we <laughs> uh, achieve a lot of fun. You know, it's always fun. Sometimes it's it's really good, and sometimes yeah. it's a lot of fun, and sometimes it's both. Um, no, but we we do you know Monday, Wednesday, Friday streams, two to five. We realized early on that like it's not the same as writing, recording, putting out music on Spotify. It's not the same as a live show for mm -hmm. us. And, you know, it's not the same as, as anything else. So it really did become kind of a, let's just have fun. Let's play some tunes. Let's practice a little bit. Yeah. Uh, let's be silly and let's get to, let's have people get to know us um, and vice versa. Yeah. And I love the vibes over on your stream. So for anybody who is still here with my community which many of you are um y'all know that i was in the collective they everybody makes fun of me because i would like after we could talk about it i was like guys i was in the collective like <laughs> like fancy um so I'm, I'm gonna make fun of myself about it so jeremy was in the collective um Aww. with us he is responsible for david lee sloth um <laughs> i i don't have the heart to delete him he's still in my emotes is uh, he really? yeah he's cool. still in my emotes yeah. i i wow. don't I just don't have the heart. So this is, I don't know, not enough people here know this, that this is the person responsible for David Lee Sloth. <laughs> I but apologize. I think, I, <laughs> I think the, didn't the Mandevilles though name him? Yes. So they came to our thing and they were like, we had this thing that was funny in our stream one time where we said like David Lee Sloth or something. And yeah. we were like, that's hilarious. And I was like, let me do the worst Photoshop job I can imagine and make uh, David Lee Sloth the mascot. <laughs> Which I just, I just don't, I can't delete it. I can't. <laughs> Eventually, maybe I'll delete him, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just hoping more for more slots before I delete him, honestly. He's yeah, just, it's yeah. just too perfect. It's just too good. If ever there were a reason to sub to this channel, <laughs> yes. just get more remote slots. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, thank you, Juggalo. Visual and audio <laughs> collapse help music streamers. Oh, they do, actually. Um, and that's kind of one of the questions I have for Jeremy. Uh, which I, I don't even mind jumping right into it, honestly. We can get to other stuff. Um, but how has streaming for you, uh, and I don't actually know when exactly you started streaming, so how has streaming for you affected your mental health positively, would you say? Mm. Yeah, so we started streaming in 2019, um, kind of off and on. I think we first made our account in February, but we didn't like start streaming really. We, you know, everybody does kind of does a thing where you, you're yeah. dipping your toe in the water for long periods of time. We really started committing to it more regularly in 2020. And then near the end of last year, um, really started saying, okay, we're going to do longer streams. Like we were doing shorter streams and kind of let, we kind of weren't super sticking to a schedule. So we really, we kind of started to get serious about it about the back half of, of last year. Um, and I think that the biggest thing for us, beyond some of the obvious, like, you know, the, the obvious needs of, like, being able to play music for people, which is mm -hmm. something that any performer, like, needs to have. A lot of people were talking about how when the pandemic happened, like, people don't realize how introverted a lot of musicians are. And, like, performance is kind of their, like, connection to the world in a lot of ways. And mm -hmm. so, like, having that taken away. Um, so Twitch is... It's a different form of that, but it's still very much that. And so that it was such a, a huge, even before the pandemic, but certainly during, that was just such a huge positive impact. Um, and, and I think too, for us, because we realized early on, I'm I'm certainly much, and Jenica will tell us, to say this too, like I'm much better at just using like sheer unearned, like white male enthusiasm, just like unearned confidence <laughs> of, of a white male to just power through uh you know like mistakes and whatever else it is and just be like i belong here and so um <laughs> <laughs> so for you know for me it it's like that being said with her and and myself it not always but w with both of us it has really really helped us kind of embrace um imperfections as well it's helped us really uh expand our musical horizons and 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 ultimately just mentally 
helped us kind of get out of this weird cycle that um, we as bands find ourselves in. You know, we're not just, I don't want to say just streamers, but like mm-hmm. we started as a band, same, yeah. same as you. Like we did not start making music from our, our bedroom as streamers. We started recording music, then we went to studios, we went on tour, and we've put out records, and we did the, like we are doing the other side of it, right? Yeah. So, so having this experience, it's like, it helps you get away from that because Twitch is this world that a lot of that world still doesn't understand. Yeah. And it's like super cool because we can have our own thing here. We we don't have to hear about all of the stuff about like, oh, your socials and you have to look like this and act like this and be cool and all this kind of shit. You can just be yourself on Twitch and people connect with that. And so like just from a standpoint of just wanting to to remember why we play music and what what's fun about it, Twitch has like been amazing. Yeah. And like the ability to, you know, you're in the middle of a song, say, and you look up at your chat and you start improving lyrics, you get a raid begin, you start improving lyrics. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff is so incredibly lost IRL. And while I'm looking forward to going back to doing gigs, because I I do miss that, it's very difficult to headbang uh, in a stream. It's just not the same. Um, I'm, I'm very ready to do that safely. Um, but it's, it is the connection for me. The I never expected to, first of all, I didn't know what Discord was, period.com. I did not know what Discord was before 2020. Uh, and even so, I was like, I don't want one of those. I have a Facebook group, as if it matters. Um, right. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and so I begrudgingly made a Discord, and now it's like my go-to. Like, if I'm sitting at my computer, I am literally sitting here on Discord. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, my It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's pro okay. streamer. Pro streamer. Pro stream. Uh <laughs> and, and so it's like you're you're sitting here and you're doing something to exactly. What's a Facebook group? Uh you're you're sitting here talking to people. I I kind of err. I in my opinion, I talk too much sometimes on stream. Um I'll have like 15 minutes in between songs sometimes. Like my songs per hour is dreadful compared to a lot of other streamers, but I've come to see this as positive. People kept telling me, no, talk, like do it. Because I was so used to IRL musicians being like, you're talking too much on stage, which was, by the way, 2% of the amount I talk <laughs> on stream. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy is a chatty boy. Did y'all think he was not a chatty boy? I invited only chatty boys on this segment. <laughs> yeah, totally. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, if like, if people come to to hear the, you know, there are so many great streamers on this platform who own their own thing and do their own stuff. And, and there are some streamers that I'll go and they'll just do like 30 minute long, you know, they'll build their, their tracks and they'll mm-hmm. do all stuff and it's very pretty and they're very chill and that's their thing. And I, I love that too, but I'm the yeah. same way as you. It's like, yeah. no, nah, I'm, I'm here to giggle. Yeah. I'm here for the fun. And I didn't even like, I, I didn't mean to be. I just kind of that's what happened you find your own stride after a while and and you've been doing this quite a lot longer than me I I only started in April 2020 um Mm -hmm. and then your 2019 was like my 2020 I -hmm. I took it seriously but not as seriously as I wish I had uh and so I didn't quite take off with streaming until January 2021 did you just say jeremy's more dashing than me how dare than me how Will dare you, read? you oh then you okay yes. all right it's fine i'm just kidding <laughs> Damn. i'm just kidding uh i just want to hear more songs yes yes Job. you can absolutely find moonlight i almost said moonlight spotify i mean that is moonlight accurate spotify. but but moonlight social on spotify that is also one of my favorite things to come of twitch is so many people release music and they distribute music um, and I'm just like following people constantly on Spotify. It makes my discover weekly lists really interesting uh, and diverse. Like like what yeah. you mentioned, like some people are just real chill. Some people are just kind of, you know, more upbeat. I would say you're on the high end of energy. Uh, for anybody here who has not been to Moonlight Social's channel, if you think I'm energy, y'all haven't even seen, like, it's pretty wild. <laughs> In the best way possible. In the best way possible, because I don't, you. I don't contain that type of an- energy. I don't energy. I don't contain that type of no. energy. Um. So I, I want to go back to this. I want to circle back to marching band and um, getting oh, yeah. to know a little bit more about music. Your musician story. So first of all, what did you and Jenica play in marching band? 
So I was on the drum line. Um, I played the tenor drums, which is uh, for anybody. It's the one if you can picture a drum line in your head, which I always say that and people are like, Nick Cannon. Uh, I didn't <laughs> play what Nick Cannon played. Uh, I played the one with in, in in our case we had six drums in front of us, and so it's kind of mm. one like this, and it's the pitch drums. It's like the melodic side of the the drum line. Mm. Um, and she played the trumpet. Oh, nice. I don't think I was expecting either of those answers. Actually, I really, know, I don't know what I was. What expecting. would you What would you say? Hmm. Jenica, I would have said clarinet, hundred okay. percent. Yeah, and, <laughs> and and you, I would have guessed more like tuba or Ooh. another big like trombone or something. Boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could totally, I could, I could tuba. I could get down on, on the tube. Then <laughs> get down on the tube. I uh, I played. F- I did all the things. I was in marching band for ten years straight between middle school and college. You were in marching band too. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a damn sport in college, man. I yeah. was never in good, better shape, gooder shape, uh, better shape than I was when I was. Where did in... you go? Where did you go? I went to Eastern Michigan University. Okay, right on. Yeah. Um. How how many did y'all march? How many? Yeah. Oh, you mean how many in the band? You know what? I have no idea. Not it was not in t- it's not that big. It was probably less than two hundred people. Probably between one fifty and two. Yeah. It's pretty small. But still. E- even that is like crazy. Like people don't. I I love marching band, and I like, I encourage anybody who's oh, yes. you know like, like to to. There's nothing like being a part of an ensemble that big, and still yeah. like mattering. You know, like especially at the college level, it's like, it it's crazy to to think that you're like that part of something that big, and and that everybody's like working together and, and the same kind of thing and. Yeah, totally. I, I love it. I didn't realize that you. That's awesome. Yeah, that's why when you mentioned it, I'm like, oh, fun fact. A lot of people actually just don't know that at all about me. They know that I play the flute, but they might not know why, because that can mean band in a lot of ways. Because um, I was in every band. You were a drum major. I was. I was. I was not a drum major in college. I was a drum major for two years in high school. I played. I went back and forth between flute, piccolo, and then I did color guard for a year as well. Um, I was a section leader on pick though in in college, um, but I never I didn't fi- when I was finishing college I already got hired to be in a wedding band so I had to actually quit marching band before I was like I had to quit mid season which gutted me, but um, but but real life called and I had to take a job and it was yeah so I had to back out but they wanted me to actually do drum major and I'm glad I didn't do that that would have been a much bigger mess than just replacing a section leader but uh but yeah i i miss marching band with all my heart all my heart and soul do you do you still remember when you were a drum major like your little like no i don't shit? no because oh, they were different for, because they were different to get you to do one on stream. <laughs> <laughs> no i remember the the that though whatever that is the the salute yeah. i'm doing it with the wrong hand by the way because it would be blocked otherwise um, so that was even weirder because I'm not left-handed, which is a whole other segue uh, that nobody knows is happening at some point. If Jeremy might know the hint, I wa- so I spent some time with your film this morning and the ba- behind-the-scenes thing. That yeah, we will get into that. Just I'm gonna make that a mental note. Yeah, I'm the opposite of left-handed. Uh, so yeah, that's the only thing I I remember how to do is the that but we had a different salute and and i think it was just called a salute uh we had a different one for every single show oh wow okay yeah so like every single reset of a show it i my brain doesn't work that was way too long ago <laughs> <laughs> that i have no idea what they were yeah. we're we, you have now entered marching band Twitch. Welcome. Welcome. It's a small pool. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know man there's probably a lot of twitch streamers who were in marching band honestly yeah but yeah. but honestly also knowing your personality and having gotten to know you better in the collective I, i'm not surprised at all that uh you're in marching band <laughs> um but but getting back to that legitimately my my question was like where did your love of music begin uh how did mm. it how did it begin that's it because i actually don't know anything about that with with your life yeah i mean i think the biggest thing was like my mom was just super supportive so i don't know exactly like where music started but i remember the first you know anytime i wanted to like pick up an instrument my mom was always okay and then she would all also like not scold me for for not following through right like if i didn't i mean i now am like shit i should have really committed to piano every (laughs) time i watch you play piano i was like i should have fucking stopped with piano uh but 
but she would, you know, it's like I wanted to play the the viola, and and so that was something that she was like, okay, but you know, you just got to promise that you give it a shot. Like you got to promise that if you're gonna start, that you'll at least like give it, you know, an earnest try. And then moved on from the viola to the trumpet, and then the trumpet instead of when I left uh, junior high into high school, I wanted to do drums instead. And so like I just always kind of went through this process, and and mm-hmm. like guitar was something that was, you know, I think my first guitar was like a pawn shop guitar, is like a like a the serial number was scratched off. It was stolen for sure, hundred percent. Had a Sammy Hagar sticker on it. It was ah. purple. I didn't know who Sammy Hagar was, uh, but <laughs> but it was Fine. like it was just always. I like when it came to there were a lot of things that I like. We didn't get to eat like like a sugary food in the house or or any of that kind of stuff. And I was always kind of an introvert, so I never really wanted to like go to like Six Flags or anything. But we didn't really get to do any stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but when it came to music, my mom pretty much never said no. Aww. She always was an enabler. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. Even with like drum sets and like just horrible. I would say that's, know. that's commitment to support yeah. your kids with drums. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It paid off though. You know, I played all, play all the drums on the records and stuff now. So there you go. Yeah. It that's, that's incredible. My parents are very, very similar in that way. Um, my, my first guitar was a, uh, uh, platinum series BC Witch Warlock. That's. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> I know. I think my dad picked that out. Then also the kicker. I think the present. I think the the holiday that it was being like presented, being gifted, was like Easter or something, or like my confirmation. <laughs> um, no, I think it was my confirmation. Uh, that it, which is even better. Uh, and then uh, stupidly, my dad let me make this decision, but I actually hate that he let me make this decision. I sold it. Uh, and I did uh, not get enough money for it. I really wish I still had it. Um, wow, beastie rich, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a warlock. It was in your blood from the beginning. <laughs> it, was in, it was in your blood from the beginning. Oh, yeah. My parents are also enablers in the best way. Like, I, some of my yeah. BRB screens are actually literal, like, camcorder footage from 1996 of me and talent shows. So they have been enabling me and being wonderful momagers and dadagers in my life yeah yeah the the whole time and now they're on twitch um are your parents involved in twitch at all my mom has tried i don't bless her heart Uh, (laughs) but not like in the southern way but kind of in the southern way like (laughs) she was like last like we did it when we did our front page stream she was like i tried but i just didn't know i was like mom you just click you don't even have an account it's like you've been on the internet mom you know how to get like anyways no um, twitch is hard Twitch is hard. She has popped in a couple times when she can, but it's probably, I'm going to be real with you. It's probably for the best that very few of my family members watch our Twitch. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> my dad, you're not crying. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> it's probably Aww. also like for the longest time, like my parents would also like stop in. And also thank you for the follows y'all. I'm trying not to you know interrupt too often. Thank you so much. Uh, Cadillac and Eric. I appreciate you. Um, but I, they were, they were not, they would be here every once in a while, but not super uber present. But then once like the weather got crappy, um, they, and my dad retired in October, I think that was a big catalyst. I, I'm just going to say that right there. My dad retired. Um, and, and so they're both actually really good at technology and you can see they're chatting oh, wow. and, and using, uh, emotes and shit. So they've been, they've been around a lot more often. And I will say, I do not clean my act up. They know what they've gotten into. I, I see dad is a VIP, but not a mod. Good call. Good call. <laughs> no, he'd be like, no, 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 not that. Take it away. I don't want that. Um, but what's funny about that is, you know, they've both been enablers in the best way uh, for yeah. me. And I, I, too, I kind of went to college also for creative arts. It had nothing to do with music, though. I, I went toward like the TV, radio, and also announcing and like audio engineering. Um, and like a concentration on like film theory, but I never did like the actual film degree that you probably did. Um, so I, I, I too kind of was always like needing to do radio shows and stuff, which worked out really great for me now, uh, 15 years later. Yeah. Well, almost between, you know, it's been like 11 years since I graduated. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that I'm aging myself. Uh, but I'm just saying, I would, li- I would listen to your voice on the radio or podcast or anything. You got a, you got a fantastic 
radio just even if i close my eyes and just think i'm like listening to a podcast or like sirius xm or something you could you'd crush it well thank you welcome to ako taco about it here on friday may 6th <laughs> I'm telling you but, right there. Yeah. But what's funny is if my dad could get off a of work in time, he would actually come and co-host, help me host my radio show with me. And he did a couple of those and it was always fun. And I'm threatening that on for like for Father's Day, like on the Monday after Father's Day, that he should come and do a co-host <laughs> with me and take Trash's spot for the day. And uh, but but he would not be modding. He would just be co-hosting. Uh, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, it's like, it's fine. It's all right. People would love it, though. People, yeah. people would absolutely love that. And they live like a half mile down the road. My dad could leave right now and make it here and like. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. They live very close. Um, so, yeah, it's it's great to hear that um, they were enabled for you. I feel real weird about using that word, but you know what I mean. It's well, you know, it's like if music, it's like, I mean, music is, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's the best possible sickness. It's kind of an addiction. It's you do ridiculous things for it. You know, you you make terrible decisions in the name of of making music. You turn down all sorts of opportunities because it's not. You know, it's just. But it's it's special. It's unlike anything else. Mm-hmm. It's like you you couldn't. You have to do it. So it, it, that's the thing for me. It's like people ask why I do what I do instead of everything else. Because like I'm sure, and you're probably the same way. Like we could do a lot of things, but we can't not do this. Yeah. You know. I can't not do I it's not a thing I have literally I this is all that I do this is I've been a musician full-time since 2010 and that was the job that pulled me out of marching band too early uh (laughs) and I didn't retire from that job till the pandemic actually um so I I have been solely doing music uh and or like working social media websites for said music companies that I've worked for in the past so yeah I can't not do it uh and if I if I didn't do it, I'd probably I don't know. I any time that I didn't have music too present in my life or I had a couple weeks off of work or something, I would like not be able to sleep at night. It was really strange. Mm. Like it would be like you're not you're not the outlet isn't there. And so it, it I would just like not sleep at night. It was the strangest thing. Wow. You know, I and yeah, I I think I do sleep better on after even after stream nights, definitely after shows like mm-hmm. I'm like out but um yeah interesting i haven't really thought about that right yeah i never made that correlation and then every once in a while we'd have a few weeks off here and there and none of my bands would get booked and i'd be like no i need that like please i need a couple weekends off or something and then i would really struggle to sleep i was actually concerned that was gonna happen during the pandemic but streaming Mm -hmm. streaming is actually a whole other type of extroverted thing that it like you said like a lot of musicians are interviewed introverted uh but this streaming as an introvert i don't know if you particularly identify as an introvert first of all but for me i'm i'm kind of an extroverted introvert in a lot of ways like i'm cool with being extroverted if it's planned and i can prepare Mm -hmm. myself mentally Uh, Mm -hmm. but if i'm pushed into a situation where i must be extroverted i'm like fuck everybody i'm gonna be over there with the cat in the other room peace um yeah so how how do you kind of identify in that way so i think for me and i heard a really great definition because i struggled to define i do identify as introverted but i struggled to define what it meant because similar to you like people will see me on stream or they'll see me on stage or they'll interact with me in person and it's like they're like you don't seem introverted like you could talk about fucking anything you you know you could talk to a a spider Uh, and so it's like (laughs) What it is, I saw a really great video from uh, a director named David F. Sandberg, uh, who is on YouTube, and he did a bunch of horror shorts. Um, I believe he's Swedish. He and his wife did horror shorts, just really cool DIY stuff. And eventually, mm-hmm. um, one of the shorts he was able to turn into a full feature, and then he ended up getting um, did an Annabelle movie. He did a Shazam, a couple of Shazams. Anyways, very oh, cool, successful story. <laughs> Re- yeah, really cool dude. Um, great YouTube channel. But anyways, he had a thing was like, can you be an introverted director? Because yeah. that was one of his things. And he had a great definition of introversion, which is he said basically like, I'm not a shy person, but being around people drains me. And so I like, like my battery depletes very quickly. And so mm-hmm. I, I feel like a lot of extroverts get their energy. They get their 
um, their, you know, yeah, energy from being around people. I'm the opposite. I get mm-hmm. my energy from being by myself. Yeah. And when I go out, it's like, it depends on the context, but my battery drains very quickly. And so I can't be in those types of situations. So similar to you, like if I were like forced to interact in my, even if my battery were full, I'd, it would be drained super quickly and, and even mm-hmm. worse if it yeah. weren't full, it would, yeah, same, same as you for sure. That's really interesting. I, I, I would have guessed that because you're somebody who has an on button. I'm very much the same way. Uh, people don't believe that I, I legitimately just, I don't talk that much. Uh, I, I put on the on radio. What you guys see on stream isn't what I am. It's so hard to, uh, like what I'm trying to say is not that I'm not being authentic because that is not what I mean. What I mean is that it's like an on button. It's like a persona. It's like an amplified version of my authentic, authentic self. Uh, and, and that's, it's a really hard line to draw. And I know Jeremy, you obviously do the same thing. Your on button pushes and like you're off. (laughs) You're, you're Uh, gone. uh, Yeah. That's what it's like. It's like there, there's one, it's like, there's one Aaron, there's one Jeremy, but there, yeah, there's the performer and, and there's the not, and it's like, and they're both real and they're both me, but I cannot be both at the same time. And, you know, and, and so that's what it is. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. And I had never really thought too much about the authenticity thing until streaming. And so like for me, the weirdest part was that, you know, you're on stage all the time. We're playing, you know, re- you know, medium sized venues that are pretty much rock. Um, I'm doing my makeup in a in a, a one particular way um, and it looked terrible. So <laughs> Trish has been an aspiring photographer since before the pandemic so I was using her DSLR um, for a long time and so we set up cameras and I felt like I looked like a fucking clown um, Mm. because just the way (laughs) that I did my makeup the way that I did my eyebrows everything about it started to feel totally uh, unauthentic in Inauthentic. 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 Yeah. Thank you. I'm like disauthentic. That's not a thing. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Disauthenticized. Yeah. Uh, whatever <laughs> word, syllables. Uh, and so it felt really, it just didn't feel authentic. And and then I realized like I, I had never really given a whole lot of thought to that. Because especially when you're on a rock stage, you have 30 or 40 minutes to rock the fucking socks off of people and then you're gone. And like, and I'm sure you've been in that position too. You, you're on like heightened on mode, right? And so I would do my makeup quite big, quite, and honestly, it kind of looked a little clowny. And so I I just felt like after the first few months of streaming, I'm like, I don't know who this is, but I don't, I don't know who that is. It was really strange. And now that we have a couple gigs booked, they're all outdoors. And it's like, Mm. I don't know how to it's i haven't see i haven't bridged the gap yet so many people on twitch um have bridged this gap now i'm gonna struggle to go backwards like how am i going to translate this and shut the fuck up in between songs (laughs) do you you know um have you have you done so in nashville have you ever done like a writer's round no i have not actually it's a very interesting mix because it is very much about like you can kind of tell a story and then play the song. Um, doing writer's rounds really helped me kind of understand if what I was saying was like interesting or not because it's like you get up there and there's like a lot of times there's songwriters who are storytellers and they're not really artists per se. They are like really good storytellers. And so the best ones, like they have their stories lined up right before their songs and they just crush it. And and hmm. I started going to more writer's rounds and performing at one. And that actually was similar to what you're saying. Like that's what inspired me last time. Our last tour, November, 2019, um, was my favorite because we actually put together a whole production thing. We had actually this SPDSX back here. We had like some old, you know, free, uh, public domain clips that I'd found about like teaching children how to do music. It was like, I just basically ripped this old, old cassette or not even cassette record on <laughs> teaching kids about music That's and amazing. I broke it up and I, yeah. And, and I, and I like, I put it in between bits of songs. And so it's like, we planned where we would say something and it just, it helped me think. And same thing with like movies. It helped me think about like how the show works as a, as an arc and as a story. And, um, I don't know where I'm going with this other than to say, 
I had the same, I struggled with the same thing for a while. And then yeah. I started to notice it more when I go to shows too. Like who does this really, really well? Like I went to a Shinedown show this past week and, and I've known this because I've seen them a lot, but they just do such a good job of telling a story with their show. That's awesome. I've not gotten the, uh, I've not had the privilege to see Shinedown, but I would, wouldn't mind seeing Shinedown actually. That it's, sounds. Yeah. It, they're they're a hell of a show and they, they all produce the, the stuff too but and then you know the previous week i saw the eagles which is one nice. of my favorite bands of all time yeah and it's just like um anyways it not to get too far off track but um good luck with outside it, how where in in michigan is it hot there yet it's not hot here yet it doesn't okay. get hot okay. till like maybe mid-june or so okay yeah so we'll be fine we actually have we have a we're shooting a music video on the 18th um which <laughs> it's gonna be fucking amazing. We're we're doing like an open call for people uh, in Michigan or around I'll be Michigan. There. Please, no, I'll be I would there. fucking eight hours, right? <laughs> I would fucking die. I'd be like, oh my god, how dare you're perfect though. So we're gonna have dinosaurs, and they're gonna be eating people. And the whole concept, you will actually really love this video. I think overall, because it's totally absurd. It's incredible. Um, and this was our manager's idea, by the way. This was his. Bane, Bane baby, brain baby. Um, he goes, what if, you know, uh, we had people in inflatable suits and like, you know, the inflatable T-Rexes, all of those uh, chasing people around. But the whole thing was like Elsie Binks is doing a concert, quote concert. And people are like standing around in a park and they like, oh, what's that? Oh, they're throwing a concert. So everybody starts running toward the stage. But then all of a sudden there's dinosaurs also running with them and they start to like attack people. But then after a while, like the dinosaurs are like, no, quit it. It's fine. We also just want to be at the stage. So then by the end of the video, they're all at the end of the stage partying. And then the caveat became we actually somebody came into our life who works with the actual animatronics from Jurassic Park. And Whoa. he's bringing some of his dinosaur actors, some of the like the smaller ones, like velociraptors. So we actually <laughs> it sounds like a nightmare I had once. Um it, we actually have access to like those puppeted animatronic dinosaurs and we know somebody else who also has lots of contacts with these type of puppets and we're just doing a call and uh yeah it's gonna be interesting i'm directing it so that's fun uh <laughs> wow that sounds like a trip that's gonna be a good time yeah and so we have a food truck we got porta potties i have a safe zone nobody's fucking allowed in the safe zone except crew um <laughs> Because that's just that's just where I'm at right now. Everybody accepts where I'm at. So it's I have a safe zone and so does our crew. Um, yeah. And we're going to have three shooters. Trish is one of them. Um, and it's it's just it's going to be wild. And I bought a megaphone. I bought a megaphone. When you know it's real. It, when you start to buy the things that you know that you probably shouldn't buy, but it's for it's for the art. Yep. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm sure I'll use it again in like 10 years. This is going to come in handy. I'm telling you. Uh, On stage during that song. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Wendy will be there. There's, there's a couple people in our chat who plan to be there. I'm very excited. Um, I'll be meeting some people we met on Twitch through this, which is also just mind-blowing that there's going to be people that are now in our lives who want to come be in a video with us um so yeah the, it'll i've definitely i've directed videos before but they weren't with people outside of the band um yeah and so this is gonna be i guess my directorial debut which is a really great segue into your short film oh yeah oh yeah oh, that that little guy that little thing it's it's if you guys have used the chat commander if you've seen it in the chat um the last link actually is their like Moonlight Social's main website, you'll see it real quick on that website. Um, and uh, honestly, I just want to know how it came to be. And I already mm -hmm. posted it in my Discord in my movie channel, by the way, y'all, um, mm -hmm. because you need to see it. I I had I had watched part of it like when you posted it, whenever it happened, and then this morning I revisited it and also watched the interview with um, your main lead actress as well, which was fantastic. Uh, and so tell me, tell me how that came to be. Like, did you mm. dream this concept up? What, what, just tell me, tell me the, the whole thing, the evolution. Yeah. So I have always, we, we do our music videos similar to y'all and, mm -hmm. and I would, you know, I, I had this idea. Um, the first thing I was like, I know that I want to 
I love horror, first of all. I love horror movies. And I know that I want to, in the middle of the pandemic, I know that I wanted to be able to do something in the house, right? I was like, horror is great because you can do so much with so little. And, and you can still achieve a lot of great results with, with a very small amount of um, money, basically. Mm-hmm. And, and space and people and all of this stuff. Horror is just such a great genre. Th- thrillers too, but just, you know, suspense. Like, it's just such a great genre for that. So I was laying uh, in bed one night and pretty much the entire story just like came to me in like two sentences and I got up and I went and I wrote the whole thing down and then I went into Jenica's room, (laughs) didn't even knock and I just said, Jenica, listen to this. And then we (laughs) talked about the story and we kind of made some tweaks and then the next day I wrote the script and I was like... I really had, I had this idea where it's like, I don't want to do a music video for Let's Get Sad. I want to do like a short film and, and it's going to be weird. And it's going to, Let's Get Sad is a song that we put out, by the way, um, yes. for those who, who don't know, it's a, yeah. it was a single at the time. And so I was like, there's got to be an interesting way to introduce these concepts together. And there's got to be an interesting way to make it kind of all flow and work. And so basically, you know, I'd, I'd written it. Um, I met Masha actually when she was visiting, uh, she was visiting Nashville and we talked about the, the project and I wasn't even like thinking about, you know, her being in or whatever. And then mm. cause she lived in Los Angeles and, and then we just kept talking. Um, and ultimately it was like a project that she really loved. She really loved the message behind it. I think that it's something that a lot of people resonate with. Um, I won't like spoil it if anybody is wanting to go check it out, but it's one of those things where, I wanted all of the, I wanted the entire film to have like different levels of meanings. And I wanted mm-hmm. there to be a lot of visual representations. And I wanted there to be a lot of things that you go back and rewatch, kind of rewatchability. That's what I love about certain levels of like psychological horror. And then at the end, you know, it's like I wanted there to kind of be this weird kind of semi conclusion. And so all that, all that being said, when we finally like got together over the weekend to make it, um, you know, it took twice as long as we thought it would, but I was really, really happy with how the whole thing came out and there are very few people working on it. And, um, we had to come up with some interesting ways to, you know, make blood and, and do some yeah. really kind of low budget, uh, uh, effects and everything was shot in camera. So like there's a scene, um, just for anybody who knows, like every, all of like the kind of horror elements are based off of like like nightmare tropes so various things that ha- might happen in nightmare whether it's like being naked and vulnerable uh being trapped claustrophobic um not being able to scream all sorts of stuff like that right so there's a bunch of different tropes and uh there's a there's a, a moment where she's trying to get a window and then she turns and the windows just become a wall and like i our landlord at the time had left a bunch of paint in the garage <laughs> and there was like color for the bathroom and i was like we could probably paint this old science fair board this color of wall and so literally we had, you know, a person holding this piece of cardboard up against the wall. And so it was, it was pulled away and she's trying to get out the window and the, the camera's on her and she hears the, you know, the bad person try to get in. So mm-hmm. we, we pan quick over to the doorknob, the doorknob shaking. She grabs the doorknob to try and stop. She turns and now the window's a wall. And that's literally a person huh. putting a piece of, you know, wall painted uh, cardboard up against the wall to suddenly replace it. And so I love that kind of shit because it's yeah. all, it's called practical effects. It's all in camera. There was, you know, it was no like VFX, nothing. It was all just, you know, a couple, a handful of people working on it. So, so that was a. Yeah. You said it took a little bit longer than you thought to shoot it. How long did it take you guys to shoot that? Oh, geez. Um, I think it was, I mean, it, it still happened in a weekend because okay. when she came in, she came in to visit and she, you know, she only had the weekend because she was flying out. Uh, like several things broke several pieces of gear broke beforehand because of course. of course yeah um i think like each night we went until like three or four in the morning oh. and we yeah and like i'd planned to be done at midnight so yeah it was it was a bit rough but everybody was like it was a small group and everybody was really into it and yeah it was just it was i i love it i have another short film for another song in mind um i love doing this i want to make movies like i you know I, the, it's just part of who i am so Here's here's the thing is that I knew you had made a short film. First of all, I was offended that I didn't know it was horror. Uh, mm. And then I was more offended that I didn't know you love horror. <laughs> I'm like, love it. I don't I guess we've never talked personally enough for it to have come up. 
we've been in space as a bunch together now over the past couple months, but we're never just like hanging out. Let's talk about movies, you know? Um, yeah. So to learn that you love horror is not surprising because your short film is beautiful. It like it, it looks a lot like it follows, in my opinion, like the style, a lot of yeah. the the slow tracking, the zoom in. And I'm just like watching this. I'm like, oh, my God, like how how very dare. Um, and some <laughs> of the some of the editing is also really smart. One of my favorite things. And and correct me if I'm wrong. I actually re rewound on YouTube. I, <laughs> you know, oh, I put the remote. <laughs> yeah. I scrubbed backwards because I wasn't sure. Um, because I needed to hear it again. But when you're on the phone with yeah. Masha, is the song playing in the background behind you talking? Okay, yeah. That's what I thought. I'm yeah. like, is that what I'm hearing? I'm not sure. And I, I had to rewind it a couple times. Uh, yeah. But I love that kind of smart editing. It was so smart. And it's worth, it's like, it's what, 15 minutes, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, y'all, you, you will not be sad if you give your 15 minutes to this. And then you'll probably want to watch the 15 minutes where Jeremy talks to Masha uh, in a oh. in a music video. No, in a um, in a YouTube video as well. Um, it's equally as interesting. I went into that video thinking, oh, I'm probably not going to watch this. I'm just going to scrub through because, you know, whatever. And then 15 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I guess I watched it. Um, <laughs> so it was it was really lovely. Um, I Thank just I, I can't fangirl enough about it. Uh, Yes, mom, it's on YouTube. If you go to moonlightsocialmusic.com, it'll it'll pop up. It's like if you scroll down just a smidgen, you'll find it. Or that link that Trish just put in there, which is much smarter than what I did. Uh that's what that's what partners and mods are for. <laughs> um so if I didn't expect to ask this question, but here I am. Um if you don't mind talking for another few minutes cuz I don't want to yeah. again, boundaries. Uh <laughs> things I've I learned from the collective boundaries yeah. uh <laughs> since you're such a big fan of horror movies and i hate when people ask me what my favorite horror movie is i'm not asking you that i'm asking okay. i suppose what are your favorite subgenre? and then if you would like to expand upon what your favorites are um that would be lovely also but i definitely would love to know what your favorite subgenre of horror is gotcha um so i definitely Here, here's something here's something weird i don't particularly love slasher movies mm -hmm. um but i love slasher like parody okay uh it's very interesting um my favorite i i do enjoy demon base like i do enjoy exorcism stuff i think that there's a ton of compelling stuff in religion um yes. it's always fun to just fucking get into because it's so it, you know it's so personal to people yeah and i'm not a religious person but it's just it's so fun to think about the history there there's so many stories mm -hmm. um and so many cultures that you can derive kind of like religious based you know demon uh based horror from mm -hmm. but so that it's a weird answer but yeah i love like parody like slasher parody that ends up being really good um there's a couple films out there that do it all right but there's a lot of good tv shows um uh, in my opinion, that are at least entertaining that, that do it well. I do love, you mentioned It Follows is a great movie. I mm -hmm. love psychological horror. Um, I love shit that, you know, kind of bends the mind and, and has something. So like the Babadook, yes. you know, clearly, mm -hmm. clearly just one of the best psychological horror films of all time. Um, uh, I think that there are, there's a lot to be said for the really low budget stuff. So even if I'm not, um, you know, a huge fan like uh there's a, a film that was well beyond paranormal activity because everybody knows about that one and, and the blair witch project there's um uh there's a film called hush yes. which uh my girlfriend actually uh, introduced me to that was you know shot entirely in a house with maybe a, like four four mm -hmm. actors maybe fewer yeah and it was one of those things that was just done very tastefully mm -hmm. and very and i just I, i'm such a nerd that i do if I know a little bit about the production, if I know who's making it, if I know how it gets made, like I will like it more. You know, mm -hmm. I know some people are able to separate art from artist, but when it comes to like filmmaking and, and television, so anyways, um, I'm rambling at this point, but I, I love knowing about that kind of stuff and it mm -hmm. will make me like things more or less. Honestly, yeah. there are times too mm -hmm. when I'm like, wow, you had a lot of opportunity here and you just fucking did not, you just mailed it in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like this should have been better. What was that movie? Was it Malignant? Is yeah. it malignant? Ugh. I okay. Film, you felt yeah. the same way. You felt this because everybody around me is like, "Oh, it's so good." I'm like, "This is probably the worst 
James Wan film I've ever. It was okay. So... It, it was okay for somebody else, but James Wan, come on, man, you come on. Expect more, right? Yes. And he's and he's um. There's, oh, there's a great movie that I. I'm gonna. I don't even remember the name, but I'll um. If I could find it, I'll share it with you on, yeah. on Discord. That was like done in the style of like a like an '80s kind of um, satanic panic okay. movie. Um, if you ever got into any of those like early, so the early like religious demon stuff was very much derived of like people being terrified that mm-hmm. everybody was gonna worship Satan and, and break into their homes and kill them. Um, and so there's a really good movie that was made not that long ago, but it's made to look like it was from the '80s. It was beautiful, and I'm like, this is brilliant and yeah. so smart and yeah. and. And they do such a good job versus like, yeah, like James Wan, who is incredible and produces incredible stuff. And it's still just like, you know, what is good, though. OK, so I know a lot of people um, are back and forth on M. Night and obviously yeah. he's he's had some amazing psychological stuff. And so clearly I like it. But have you ever seen Devil? Yes. Okay. It's not one of my favorite I thought that was really smart. Yeah, yeah, it's not one of my favorite. I do love Shyamalan's. The Sixth Sense is one of my favorite movies of all time, and and a lot of his movies are some of my favorite. Um, the uh, Signs as well as I actually sure. really love Lady in the Water. Um, mm-hmm. I also I did like Devil. It wasn't one of my favorites though, but I I do think it was really smart, and I I always love the M Night twists as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just I was just like, okay, so there. How do you make being like? I know they were not in an elevator the whole time, but it's like right. half of the movie took place in an elevator. Like that's cool. I so yeah. I I just I appreciate when people do something a little bit um, a little bit challenging. Yeah, I I would say that horror comedies do live in a very special place in my heart, like Tucker and Dale. Um, the best and like Ugh. Behind the Mask. You've have you seen Behind the Mask? Okay, good. Yeah. Thank goodness, because you said slasher parody. I'm like, if this motherfucker hasn't seen Behind the Mask, <laughs> I'm going to lose my shit. Um, I loved American Horror Story 1984. I don't. Yes. I know a lot of people like, I loved it. I was like, yeah. No, same, 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 same. Um, big same on that. So Trish put, so what I've learned is that Jeremy and Aaron are the same person. And I knew that, <laughs> I knew that before this conversation. So that's just even more interesting that we both mm-hmm. have a lot of gear, but also don't own dressers. I was so, going to say before we were talking earlier, I was like, I'm literally pulling clothes out of a U-Haul box, but I own two fog machines. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I get it. I get it. I have a looper, but I don't have a dresser like that. Yeah. That's the level at which streamers and musicians just in general live at. You, I have this whole desk that's worth more than everything else in my house, uh, right. but no dresser. No. How dare I have a dresser? Um, <laughs> but uh, waiting for the sequel. I Oh, that's true. I guess I have a dresser. It just doesn't live here. That's fair. Wow. I, I didn't assume it's my dresser, you know, the old the old parental thing. Well, it's in my house, so... <laughs> You're in my house right I don't know if it's my dresser. Technically, it's like mom's dresser. I don't know. I had a dresser once. Anyway, I digress. Um, we've been chatting for an hour. Um, and so, y'all, if y'all have not hit that dynamic follow button um, or navigated away to actually go follow uh, Moonlight Social, please, please, please. I won't be mad if you go navigate away to do so, please. Uh, that's the point. Um, oh, horror movie question. What did y'all think of I Spit in Your Grave? Fun fact, I've never seen the original or the remake. Neither. Neither have I. But I'll put it down. I'll write it down. It Juggalo. Com- it comes up all the time. It's like, it's somewhere, okay, it lives on a plane of Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's, I actually, yeah. before we get off of this phone call, I actually just watched Cannibal Col- Holocaust for the first time like about a month ago, knowing damn well what I was getting into. Um, and that was fun. I actually had to like disassociate and like start working on uh, stream stuff and be like, I can't watch this. Actually, I do not recommend, by the way, for anybody who might be a film student, I 100 percent recommend if you can handle it. Um, It's a beautiful film and it's fucking brilliant and it's so smart, but it is uh, incredibly fucked up and incredibly graphic. And all the animals Um, killed in it are real animals. And I learned yesterday that the the director did time for all the animals that he killed in that movie. So, so yeah, I remember remember what you're talking about. They brought that up in film school. Yeah, I'm not like the one thing I'm not a fan of, like, uh, I don't like Eli Roth. Like, I don't like gore core or whatever. Like, just like gore, like gore for gore's sake. Like the green, what do they call it? The green inferno and stuff like that. Yes. I just, I'm like, I don't know. This isn't scary. It's just gross. Like, this isn't smart. It's just like, how many ways can you gross people out? So, yeah, not for me. I know some people love it. Not for me. Yeah. I literally, and that's the thing. I, uh, 
a quick Google tells me I'm never watching that great film. Yeah, I just never got into them because there is this certain when you go to school for film or any media, really, you end up learning about these things that were uh, very, very controversial in time. And I remember learning about Cannibal Holocaust. And again, that was a decade ago. I never watched it until a month ago. Um, and I Spit on Your Grave is just one of those things that goes down kind of in in filmmaking history. And it's it's if you can stomach something like that, I, I actually have just never I've never gone into it because I started with I've been going through 80s horror and 70s horror. I had hey. also never seen any of the original Texas Chainsaws. And we've now watched the first four and I actually really enjoy them. Um, I wrote a song that actually says Texas Chainsaw in it. So I was like, wow, I'm a fucking poser. So I should probably watch those. Um, <laughs> and I actually really enjoyed them. So and now I want to make a short film. I want to make a music video for one of our um, music video. Uh, bleh, one of our songs that is like a horror short film based on Texas Chainsaw. So hell yeah. So that's that's where I'm at. Um, and so thus, thus completing an hour of just learning that Aaron and Jeremy might be the same person. Um <laughs> And that's okay, uh, which just means Air honestly, me. <laughs> <Air of me. laughs> earlier, uh, one of my friends subbed for nine months. So, you know, Twitch baby. And I'm like, oh, I want our Twitch baby to be named Aaron and April together. And Trish was like, ma'am, that's Apron. And I'm like, that's perfect. I'm this is what's wrong with right. that. Um, I'm not really sure who interviewed who, who but we learned a lot. <laughs> it's fine everything's fine um but again thank you so much for being here jeremy y'all please make sure that you're following moonlight social Wh wherever that is that you want to consume moonlight socials goodness please make sure to do that um and again jeremy please repeat your schedule here on twitch monday wednesday friday 2 to 5 p.m central noise noise so so you're on definitely so if any of y'all are like we pr we almost have the same <laughs> schedule yeah. on Twitch. Too. I feel like we get to raid you, we get to raid you occasionally, but you go longer than we do. I you, do. You have more stamina. She has more stamina. She's better than me. Ah, uh, that's a lot. All lies. <laughs> um. Oh, good juggalo. I'm glad. I'm glad. I I think Aww, again. I just baby. I just sing less than you guys do. I'm I spread it out. That's the. <laughs> Mm, I'm talking a lot and that's how I get away with it. I still only do like what 20 songs a stream or something. It's dreadful. I'm on for okay. four hours and I do like 20 songs. <laughs> hey, I'm not that's even why they love you. That's why the people are here. They 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 want some Aaron, you know. <laughs> Aaron with a dash of a song every now and then. Pretty much. It's like just chat. <laughs> I should be in just chatting instead of music. Uh right. in general, not just now. Uh but <laughs> But yeah, do you have anything that you want to uh, promo before we go? Anything new coming up? Oh yeah, we're putting out a bunch of shit. Uh, just <laughs> I I want to promo Aaron. That's what I want to promo. Thank you so much for for doing this type of stuff. It's very cool. Um, you I was hip to you before the collective. Yeah. And we did we participated in something that you put on together. You're incredibly organized which is amazing and you are uh you just have a, a great spirit and a great heart for for creative people and i really appreciate you doing this so Aww. thank you for for having me and and um yeah loved it thank you and i and i my audience knows this because i i probably said it every single time somebody's on the stream but i only ask people who inspire me uh i literally i have I mean, don't get me wrong. I have a list of people I'm trying to get down, but I literally only on that list are people I either personally connect with or maybe I'm a fan of or I'm just inspired in some sort of way. So thank you for taking the time to be here because ironically on this day, Lumi is not working, but y'all in general, Jeremy is the reason I set up Lumi and got lights that work with not Lumi, Lumia, uh, but ironically Lumi is down today. I'm like, for fuck's sake. So... <laughs> This is this is my so we have a yeah that's hilarious. There's like a weird green tint to this to this room right now because it's like the can you know like white balance like nothing has changed and uh yeah. nothing has been re reset up and so my chat being the uh, jackasses they are keep on redeeming like like we have like colors that are based off of funny names like goose turd green and so they just keep on redeeming the color goose turd green uh. because the room looks like it's goose turd. Anyways, um, it's a lot of fun and I'm really glad that that uh, <laughs> that you 
we're able to make it work. Oh yeah, my dad only enters the chat by saying uh, "command police" now. He's he's just calling the popo constantly on us. Um, Love it. And he tried to Love do it, it today. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Lumia's down right now. I can't. I'm like, Jeremy will know. And then I was like, Oh, it's actually Lumia's down. So it's, <laughs> yeah. or else I was gonna yeah, be but- like, Okay, I need your help before you get on my stream today. <laughs> That's next level dad joke, though. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, he calls the popo when he gets into the chat. So that's amazing. Yeah. Oh uh, well, I will let you go for now. Thank you so much for being here, giving us the Thank hour you. and some odd minutes now. Um, I appreciate you very much. Keep doing what you do because you're a fucking amazing content creator. And y'all in my chat who are here because you're always fucking here. Um, I just I. <laughs> that what what is twitch y'all come and hang out like y'all please you won't be disappointed if you go follow jeremy and moonlight social on all the socials um so i hope you have a lovely weekend jeremy and i'm sure i'll be chatting with you soon <laughs> sounds good thank you thanks y'all all right bye, bye.